Hello and welcome. In this video, I am going to try and make my garage door smart using the Meros MSG100 Smart Wi-Fi Garage Door Opener. Coming up next. Okay, I accept it's a first world problem, but I've got a little issue that I'd like to uh, fix, which is that when I go out on a ride, I come back, I'm tired, and I wanna just put the bike in the garage, and I have to rummage around in my pockets or in my rucksack to get my keys out, if indeed I even have my keys with me. Now, my original idea was actually to put a, some kind of garage door opener key fob on my handlebars, but obviously there's a security risk there because I park my bike and I'd have to take it off. Uh, and then I got one of these and I actually came up with the idea of um, actually something that I can control with my watch. So I did a little search on Amazon and came up with this little beauty. Uh, very inexpensive actually, I think it was 36 quid. There are two versions, one with home kit and one without. I've actually gone with home kit because the watch is Siri. It may be that I actually don't need Siri, but we shall find out. Um, so let's have a look at what's in the box. So, nicely packaged. So we have, what have we got here? This looks like the actual unit. Okay, and it's USB powered. We'll find out in a minute, but that's probably uh, how you control the, uh, the actual mechanism, and I suspect that's for the sensor. And then what have we got in here? Okay, so I think that is our garage door sensor. Looks like we've got some sticky uh, bits in there as well. Uh, and a nice long cable. So I think the idea is that this is a magnet. It crucially lets HomeKit know that uh, the garage door is closed or open. Now, interestingly, my wife, she did frown a little bit when I said that I spent some money on automating my garage door. She does roll her eyes at uh, some of my auto home automation ideas. However, the idea would actually know when the garage door was closed and actually the door would close on its own if it was left, she did actually think was quite a good idea. And that is apparently something this will do, so we'll see how we get on. Uh, and I'm guessing this is gonna be a USB charger. Yeah, so this looks like this is a USB transformer. Looks like we've got a few bits of documents here. Seven things you need to know about HomeKit. I wonder if this is important. You will only be able to control your smart device while your iOS device is in the same Wi-Fi network as, oh, okay, now that, that could be a deal breaker. So welcome to my garage here. So this is my mechanism. It's a Liftronic, and as you can see, it's a fairly straightforward, uh, I think they call it an up and over uh, mechanism. Uh, that's the unit there, which all the electronics are in, um, and there's a track that the garage door actually goes up and down. So I ran into some issues getting the home kit to work. In fact, in the end, I gave up. I was able to force my phone to connect to it without home kit. I, don't, I still don't know the reason, but I, what is interesting is the manufacturers have uh, a leaflet in the pack about home kit, and they say if you have any problems to contact them. So I think they know that it's not a straightforward process. Um, once I uh, gave up on actually connecting to home kit, which I decided wasn't worth the effort because it doesn't work outside the house anyway. Just went with the normal app um, and it seemed to work fine. Once I done, plugged it in and connected it, I then connected the sensor and I actually went into the garage and worked out a location where the sensor was gonna work and not get in the way of the mechanism. And I was actually able to see in the app when the um, switch was closed and when it was open which is really, really helpful in, in working out where to site the switch. I ended up putting it on the rail like this and I ran the cable along the top of the rail. Uh, I used some uh, epoxy resin in the end to stick the sensor. The self-adhesive pads didn't turn out to be that great, probably partly because the rail itself was quite greasy. And then I connected the control wires in parallel with the manual switch that I had in the garage and it just worked. And it works really, really well. I've got my phone here and I can actually show you the app Miros, and as you can see, you just have all your devices on there. In this instance, I've just got the garage door, and if I push the button, it opens the garage door, and I get a notification to tell me the garage door is open. 
And you see it says now open and I can now close it. The original reason for getting this was I wanted to be able to control it from my watch. Now, luckily, there is actually a Apple Watch companion app to the main app on your phone. If I show it to you here, if I just go into my apps, Miros, and I can just tap it and I get the same functionality. Because I've got an Apple Watch Ultra, however, what I've also done is I've actually put the action button uh, to it. So what actually happens, it comes up with shortcut and then you just tap it and then you've got access to it. One thing I would say is having used it a few times, it works really, really well, but it connects to the garage door through the phone. Even though I've got a cellular Apple Watch, it still needs to connect to the phone, which means that if I was out riding and I didn't have my phone, it won't open the garage door. I do need the phone uh, as well. And the phone needs to be connected to the internet. And occasionally I've had an issue where I've come back, reception is not that great where we are, and it's not worked straight away. I've had to take my phone out my pocket and then it works. But I have to say, it's still a great, great improvement on uh, rummaging around to find my keys. I'm very, very pleased with it. <clears throat> Another thing that's nice about this, you've actually got door notifications for open and close. You've got an overtime reminder, and you've also got uh, things like an overnight reminder, and you've also got an overtime close if you want, or a fixed time close. If you want the thing to close automatically, let's just say at midnight every day. Um, so yeah, not only is it great in terms of automating your garage door, but it's also really good in terms of making sure you don't accidentally leave it open. Um, one other thing, I actually have also integrated it with Alexa. Check it, hang on. The garage door is closed. So there you have it. I am actually very impressed. For the money, it's a great little solution uh, for someone like myself who does like their gadgets. Uh, it's fun anyway, but it does have a practical use and it's great that it actually knows when the garage door is actually closed and open so that it can warn you and actually automatically close it if it's left open. The only downside is that HomeKit integration and it may well be that that's something that can be easily fixed it's just not something I can get to work myself. And because it doesn't work out of the Wi-Fi network, it's not really something that I'm that worried about. So yeah, I think even if you have got an iPhone, it probably still makes sense that you don't need the Siri version because you've got the app and the app works on your watch. Um, if you are gonna buy this, please do use the link in the description. It does help the channel out. If you like this video, please do subscribe, give us a thumbs up and hit that notification bell. And I will see you on the next video. Thanks very much for watching.